in the last video we developed the framework of cobweb model now we will try to analyze it diagrammatically and for that uh, we are going to resort to this uh, set of instructions primarily we remember that uh, this was the time path that we developed in the last video and this was the uh, first order difference equation equivalent of this cobweb model that we are studying that we developed by equating the QD and QS within a certain time period and this is the elaboration of this time path value of capital A the exponential expression overall it's the complementary function and this is the particular integral part as we know that the um, ex exponential expression that is b raised to the power t determines the dynamic stability as well as the pattern of the time path because it can be either oscillatory or non-oscillatory this is an ad additional feature in addition to convergence or divergence we have studied this in the theory of the first order difference equations now we are going to focus on this part and on the basis of this part that is the value of small b we are going to develop the understanding of the given um, expression now the first part is about nature and the other part in the second column is about the pattern uh, we already know from the theory of first order difference equations that b if in absolute terms if it is less than one it is convergent and if it is greater than 1, it is non-convergent. So here we have the value of b which is equal to delta over beta. Less than or greater than 1 are the two possibilities that we are considering. And for that, beta and delta should be compared because they are in a ratio. If delta is smaller than beta, definitely the ratio will be lesser than 1 because the numerator is smaller than the denominator so definitely it will be less than one in absolute terms because we are omitting the negative sign it means that the time path of the Cobb model would be convergent but if delta is greater than beta in this formula that is delta is greater than beta then the numerator will be greater than the denominator which means that it is going to be greater than 1 this whole expression in absolute terms it will be greater than 1 this means that there will be a non-convergent case in other words that will be a divergent case now after understanding all of it we can come to the pattern of the time path we know that we take the original or actual value of b for it and it is the oscillatory pattern if it is less than zero that if it is negative so oscillatory case would be there with the negative value of b but if the actual or original value of b is greater than zero then it will be non-oscillatory that is for no negative values of b so these are the two possibilities summarized here with these two inequalities and both beta and delta are positive so if they are positive when we divide these two positive values we get a positive answer and that positive answer with this negative will become negative which means that the answer of b will be negative so a negative value of b means that we will have an oscillatory case no matter delta is greater or beta or both of them are equal there will be a positive answer and this negative sign will make it negative at the end due to which we will have an oscillatory pattern of the time path in a cobweb model summarizing that time path will be there it will be either convergent or non-convergent but its pattern would be oscillatory now we need to understand this using the diagram but before we discuss the specific cases that we can have here we are going to understand that how a discrete function can act in this uh, diagram uh, this is a diagram in which we have q in the uh, on the x-axis and y-axis has price just like we usually have in our then uh, static analysis 
when we achieved equilibrium by using supply and demand curves. Here we are trying to understand the underlying mechanism of this cobweb model that what creates this cobweb in this model. Uh, one thing that should be noticed is that there is no movement along the curves due to the discrete nature of P and Q. This is that point which will give rise to these unusual diagrams that movement along the curve is not happening because it is not a continuous case because usually we study the continuous case and it is not present here because we are considering that it is a discrete uh, set of functions and variables due to which difference equations are used. So in that case if we have a demand and supply framework the equilibrium should happen here somewhere but if we start from some disequilibrium point like this P0 we know that this much would be the surplus because supply is greater than the demand here at this point so when there is a surplus there will be a fall in the price the price would not fall here rather it will fall to this level with a certain jump and that jump ends here because that's where the other value is there that is the demand function and when the price lands here it it shows that this is the next price level that is for example p1 and there is a deficit here because the demand is greater than supply so there is a deficit here there was a surplus due to which there was a fall in the price however here since we have a deficit the price should increase but not along the curve rather with a jump here and it will be at this point approximately where it will stop and this intersection gives us the situation where again there is surplus due to which the price should fall and it falls in a discrete way not along the curve rather with a jump and again there will be a deficit that deficit drives the price upwards but with a jump and then there is again surplus at this point so the surplus will cause a decline in the price in a discrete way in a jumped way and this jump will happen like this and then deficit and then increase in price then surplus then decrease in price so this will happen and you can see this diagram is getting close to this uh, point that is the equilibrium price for example let's uh, use p status as we did before and now we have this uh, certain di type of the diagram which was not there before in our continuous analysis so this is how some uh, sort of cobweb web will be developed that is uh, you know the webs that are spun by the spiders we can see that it looks like this like a spider's uh, web something like this so this is why we call it a cobweb web model and now we will consider the other cases as well that is the uh, two cases in this certain uh, framework that we have developed the first possibility out of which would be convergent and oscillatory the other one would be con uh, uh, divergent and oscillatory because only oscillatory cases are possible as the actual value of b is negative so for convergence the absolute value of small b would be less than one and the result will be something like this we can come back to this term afterwards but let's look at the diagram first you can see that we have supply and demand functions plotted with these curves we have q we have p just like we usually have however the second panel has time in in x-axis and on y-axis we have uh, time path of price that is p as a function of price so this is the dynamic sense of the equilibrium and this is the static sense of the equilibrium that we have been studying previously so let's start with a point which is showing this equilibrium that is p0 and p0 is leading to this state where 
So this guides us about the movement towards the two curves and in the last diagram we saw that whenever there was surplus it led to a situation where uh, there is a drive down of price and in a discrete way and then it can guide us about the point of price which is the next one that is P1 here the deficit would drive the price upwards and when we reach this intersection point it shows that we have a surplus again which would highlight that this is the current price P2 which will now further guide us that if we have a surplus it would decline the price and the price further is now showing that we have a deficit again at price P3 so the price should increase to clear the deficit and we get to the price P4 which leads us to a surplus again and for that this surplus needs to be balanced by a fall in the price which will lead us to the next price that is P5 so this process will continue until we reach the equilibrium this is why we can say that if delta is less than beta that is the slope of supply curve is less than the slope of demand curve the converging dynamics in the market will take place because these dynamics are actually leading us to the convergence now in this right panel we have the dynamic sense of the same thing that is time path would be developed by using the value of P0 primarily and then the next value would be P1 and then there will be a next value which would be P2 and then there is P3 and then P4 and finally P5 and then we can choose other values as well but it is visible that we are joining all those uh, price levels that we have developed in the left panel of the diagram. If I observe the line joint here, it shows that the deviation from the equilibrium is declining. It was this much before, it declined a little bit and then it declined a little bit, then it declined further and then it declined and finally it declined to this level and then we can make more other uh, points of price as well that would be showing that the convergence is taking place so in both of these panels we can see that convergence is taking place in the static framework as well as in the dynamic framework we are uh, very much concerned with the time path so it is it is in this dynamic panel whereas the static diagram shows the cobwebs this is why we call it a cobweb model because there is quite a bit of cobweb uh, phenomenon in in terms of its appearance one thing that we should notice is that it is oscillatory in its pattern as you can see this is the oscillation that is happening above and below the equilibrium price level now the other pattern should also be understood which would be non-convergent or divergent but still oscillatory in pattern because something uh, that we have learnt in this case is that we will have oscillatory pattern of the time path of price but here divergent case would be observed here the ratio the in absolute terms of delta and beta would be greater than one that is demand has a slower slope lower slope as compared to supply curve now uh, supply and demand curves are plotted just like in the last diagram however we are starting from a point which is close to the equilibrium price because we expect that there will be divergence so we are starting from close to the equilibrium so that we get farther from the equilibrium as a result of the difference in the slopes of demand and supply curves so P0 is the beginning point we start from here and due to this surplus the price would fall and due to the deficit the price would then further increase 
would increase for the first time and then the surplus will cause a decline in the price and this decline in the price will lead to a deficit and that deficit would lead to an increase in the price and this surplus then will lead to a decrease in the price and this decrease in the price would lead to this deficit and that deficit would lead to an increase in the price in a discrete way and then surplus will lead to another uh, decline in the price which this time is substantially high and then it will meet the demand curve here a supply curve somewhere here and then it will meet the demand curve somewhere there so you see that this uh, movement is actually expanding or in other words we can call it an explosive oscillation because the oscillations are explosive in, in manner and they are gradually increasing with every point in time in the dynamic side the time path of price is oscillatory in nature as you can see above and below the equilibrium this was the starting point p0 this was p1 and then it was p2 it was p3 from the left side panel we can ch take all of these prices it is p4 and this is p5 and this would be p6 so if we join these points we get this uh, oscillatory type of curve um, or a graph which is actually getting farther and farther from the equilibrium because you can see this much of amplitude and then this much of amplitude this amplitude is uh, observable in a way which is increasing as we are going farther in time so this is divergent in both of the uh, senses that is the static sense as well as in the dynamic sense it is showing the property of divergence so in, in this is the summary of the static side of the things that you can read by pausing the video and this is the summary of the dynamic side that i have explained where the oscillation is happening and it is actually diverging away from the equilibrium price so the conclusion is that the nature of the time path is primarily dependent upon the relative slopes of demand and supply curve that we have seen in these two cases in the next video we will consider the third case which is under acknowledged and we will see that how it can be done this was the uh, development of the cobweb model in diagrammatical way which uh, allowed us to understand that why we call it cobweb model because we can observe the diagrams uh, that are similar to a cobweb thank you